Hi everyone. Thank you for joining Parkinson Voice Project for today's online Speak Out Home practice session. My name is Samantha Allendary. I'm a speech language pathologist and the founder of Parkinson Voice Project. I am here to help you establish and maintain a consistent home practice routine. I'm going to take you through the speak out exercises. We are going to practice speaking and swallowing with intent. This is very important for people with Parkinson's. Who can guess what today's topic is? There's something happening this Sunday and that's the topic for today. Can you guess what it is? Everybody, say this with intent. The Oscars. Now you say it with intent. Let's do it together one more time, even more intent. Ready? The Oscars. Will you be watching the Oscars this Sunday? That is our topic. Let's all take a sip of water with intent. I'm sipping on warm water. You don't have to do that. Although I will say that ice water or really cold water tightens the muscles up. But if you enjoy it, go ahead. I, I'm happy with any kind of water that you're drinking. <coughs> okay. The first speak out exercise is the warm up. I told you earlier in the week, I have been pausing just a moment before we do each exercise because I really want you to concentrate. I want you to use your very best voice. And so I want to give you that time to really think about it and get ready. Let's do the first exercise. May, me, my, mo, moo. Project the voice over your computer or your iPad. Let's do it again. May, me, my, mo, It's okay to take a breath, connect as many sounds as you can. Let's do it again. May, me, my, mo, mo. Don't think about the breathing. Just tell yourself, I need to project every sound over my computer. Let's do it again. May, me, my, mo, moo. Exaggerate. Use a lot of intent. One more time. May, me, my, mo. Very good. Let's take a sip of water. I hope you are enjoying the new chat feature. We did make the text um, bigger. I do want to tell you though, there is a character limit, which some of you have already figured out. I like for you to put your name and where you're from. But if you try to put too much in the line, I think you only have about 20 characters. We're gonna see if we can extend that. But um, you might just put, if it was me, I'd put Samantha Dallas or Samantha Dash Dallas if I can, if I can. Otherwise, you can just put your name and then in your message, put where you're from. It's neat to see where everybody is from. You do need to type your name first, then you start typing your message. <clears throat> All right, speak out exercise number two, the Oz. Deliberately open your mouth. We're going to be purposeful and deliberate and say, ah, ready? Ah. 
Good job. Let's do it again. Uh, imagine that you can see the ah uh, flying forward. It should be kind of going up and in front of you. Ready? Uh, let's do it again. Uh, The sound comes out clear when it's not breathy or gravelly, hoarse sounding, when it's not skipping, kind of skipping notes. Then you know that the coordination between the breathing and the vocal folds is in sync. If it doesn't sound clear, try to project out just a little bit more. Don't yell, but project forward a little bit more. Let's do another ah. Uh, good. Let's do a shorter one. Ready? Uh, that was easier. One more. Uh, we're all done with the Oz. Let's take a sip of water with intent. When you work one-on-one -on -one with a speech language pathologist or speak out provider, as we like to call them, you probably will do at least 10 of those ahs because they're really going to try to strengthen the muscles. But for home practice, we only do about five. We did a little bit more today. All right. Speak out exercise number three, the glides. I want you to project out a steady ah first and then glide. Here we go. Ah, uh, stop. Ah, uh, good. Lots of intent. Project your voice forward. Let's do it again. Uh, stop, close your mouth, and now, uh, good job, let's do it again. Uh, uh, God, how are you doing with these? They're, they're not easy. Try to get as many little notes in there as you can. Listen to me first. Uh, okay, let's do it together. Uh, to do one more but let's get some water with intent as you grab your glass or your cup I want you to think about it 
as you bring it to your mouth and swallow with intent and the rest of the day i want you to do that every time you pick up a spoon or a fork to eat just tell yourself i've got to use intent intent is your backup system that works it's not as dependent on dopamine but it's like a light switch you have to flip the switch or it won't work so before you start talking before you start swallowing before you start walking i want you to flip the intentional switch and say i'm going to think about what i'm doing All right, one more glide, then we'll do the counting. Ready? Ah. Uh, good job. All right, we're moving on to the counting. So now we are coordinating the breathing, breathing muscles with the vocal folds with our articulators, our lips, our tongue, our palate, our cheeks. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Wait. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nine. 20. You notice I had to take a breath in there and that's okay. You try to connect as many as you can, but if you feel that the sound is starting to go to the back of your throat because you're running out of air, don't keep pushing. Just take a, keep, a quick breath and speak out. Let's go backwards. Twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen. Wait. Fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, wait, five, four, three, two, one. Very good. Now, let's try to go down. Okay, I want you to be able to see this. This is another reason that I really hope you're practicing um, on a laptop or a desktop computer or an iPad versus a cell phone. I really want you to see these very clearly, okay? Not to be squinting to see the numbers. I just want you to focus on your voice. Let's go down. One, six, eleven, sixteen. Two, seven, twelve, seventeen. Three, eight, thirteen, eighteen. Four, nine, fourteen, nineteen. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. We are building strength and endurance. Strength and endurance. Let's take a sip of water and we will move on to our reading we're going to learn more about the oscars 
By the way, please join us every Thursday for our online Parkinson sing-along. It's so much fun, and it's every Thursday at 1045 U.S. Central Time. Okay. Thank you to my assistant, one of my assistants, Lisa, for preparing this. And Julie, my other assistant, is monitoring today's session. So the Oscars. We're reading with intent. We're stretching out the highlighted words. Let's read the first sentence together. The 95th Academy Awards is on March 12th. Every word with intent, even though it's a whole sentence, think about every single word. You're projecting it forward. Ready? The 95th Academy Awards is on March 12th. Okay, let's watch this. The 95th Academy Awards. Let's say it together. The 95th Academy Awards is on March 12th. Do it again. You see how I'm lifting and projecting forward? The 95th. Ready? The 95th Academy Awards is on March 12th. So every time you speak, you're going to lift your voice and speak out. Let's do the next one. Ready? It will be held at the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles. Did you slow down on Angeles? Let's read it again. It will be held at the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles. Next. Everything, everywhere, all at once leads in nominations. When we stretch out the highlighted words, it's all about using intent and controlling your voice. Can you control your voice? Can you make it do what you want it to do, not what Parkinson's wants it to do? Let's read this sentence again. Everything, everywhere, all at once leads in nominations. Answer this question. Have you seen that movie? Next. Elvis was nominated for Best Picture. The highlighted words should sound different. Differently. <laughs> Let's read it again. Elvis was nominated for Best Picture. Next. There are many award categories. Again. There are many award categories. Next. Some categories are sound and costume design. If I were audio recording you, I should be able to tell which word is highlighted because it sounds different. Let's read it again. Some categories are sound and costume design. Next. Cognitive exercises. I want you to describe these images. Oh, wow. Very good. One of Julie's favorites. Are you speaking with intent? When you describe photos, try to use as much detail as you can. This is what Lisa came up with. Let's project our voices and read these together. Audrey Hepburn, Scooter, Scarf, Gregory Peck, Roman Holiday, Black and White Movie, 1950s, read it again, Audrey Hepburn, Scooter, Scarf, Gregory Peck, Roman Holiday, 
black and white movie, 1950s. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. We're going to work on our cognitive skills. Name another movie, at least one other movie that Audrey Hepburn starred in. Did you say it with intent? Say it again. What's another movie that Audrey Hepburn starred in? How about Gregory Peck? Can you think of one of his movies? Every time you say something, speak with intent. Let's all take a sip of water, then we'll do some more. Describe this image. Who is the actress? Which character is she dressed up as? What movie? Say every word with intent. Let's read these together. Julie Andrews, Mary Poppins, Musical, Umbrella, hat in the sky say in the sky with intent ready in the sky describe this image what movie and who are the actors let's read it together marlon brando the godfather Tuxedo, Rose, Dark Room, 1970s. How about this actor and which movie is this from? Are you speaking out? Are you using your best voice? Let's read it together. Michael Douglas, Suspenders, Tie, Old Computer, Wall Street, 1980s. I think this might be the last one. Who is the actor? Which movie is this from? Use your very best voice. Let's read this together. Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump, Park Bench, Running Shoes, Blue Plaid Shirt, 1990s. All right. Let's go ahead and do Dr. Boone's words. I want you to exaggerate the G's, the K's, and the NG's. Ready? Gula Ganga Ga Gula Ganga Ga Next Ku Ka Mangu Ka Ku Ka Mangu Ka Good Ready? Gangla over the computer. Gangla and the last one. Kukla. Kukla. Go ahead and take a sip of water. I also want to ask all of you for your help. I want you to tell other people with Parkinson's about these sessions so that we can help them too. All right, get the word out. And Corkit is, is designing a new flyer. Once that's ready, I'm gonna show it to you and maybe y'all could request some copies that you could give out at your support groups, your boxing classes, things like that. Oops, first we need the bell.
There we go. Bonus reading. We are going to learn about the Oscar statuette. We're going to read with intent. If you get behind as we're reading, you can always take a little break and catch up at the next highlighted word. Here we go with intent. <clears throat> the design for the award statuette, a knight standing on a reel of film and holding a sword, is credited to MGM art director Cedric Gibbons. Sculptor George Stanley was commissioned to create the original statuette based on Gibbons' design. For many years, the statuettes were cast in bronze with 24 karat gold plating. During World War II, the statuettes were made of plaster because of metal shortages. The design, however, has remained unchanged with the exception of the pedestal base, the height of which was increased in 1945. The statuette stands 13.5 inches tall and weighs 8.5 pounds. Wow. All right. We have a little bit of time, so I want to read this again, but I want us to all take a sip of water first. Take a sip of water. You will notice what Lisa did here. She highlighted every word that comes before any punctuation. This is a really good way for you to practice. So if you were to take a magazine article or a paragraph from a magazine, you might even highlight the last word that comes before any punctuation and see if you can read it like that. Let's read it again together. Ready? Speak out. The design for the award statuette a knight standing on a reel of film holding a sword is credited to MGM art director Cedric Gibbons. Sculptor George Stanley was commissioned to create the original statuette based on Gibbons' design. For many years, the statuettes were cast in bronze with 24 karat gold plating. During World War II, the statuettes were made of plaster because of metal shortages. The design, however, has remained unchanged with the exception of the pedestal base, the height of which was increased in 1945. The statuette stands 13.5 inches tall and weighs 8.5 pounds. Notice that when I'm reading, as even though I'm reading long sentences, I'm really concentrating on saying every word with intent. You must do this when you are reading because reading is the dress rehearsal for conversation. Your ultimate goal is to get to the point where you can say in conversation every single word with intent like I'm doing right now. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Thank you so much for being here. I will be back tomorrow and remember singing is tomorrow after this session. I want you all to go to the singing group online singing group and Monday Monday this coming Monday on the 13th we will be hosting our third anniversary of doing these online sessions so please join us we have a special session planned for Monday um, I have one more question to ask you when you want people to hear and understand you what do you need to do speak with intent
That's right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.